today because we are here with Jeff Gomez. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Jeff's come all the way from New York and he's agreed to talk to us, us students at Unitech. So I think the most important question first off, Jeff, is would you please explain to us in your words what transmedia storytelling is. It's not like I haven't done that a few thousand <laughs> times. <laughs> I didn't think you'd mind. <laughs> okay, I'm Jeff Gomez. I'm the chief executive officer of a company called Starlight Runner Entertainment. We're based, as you said, in New York City. And we specialize in a, uh, a new technique uh, that allows for the design and production of story, narrative, across multiple media platforms. So um, uh, the way I kind of see it, and, and I'm not proclaiming the definitive uh, uh, definition of transmedia, but the way we see it um, in, uh, in the 21st century, young people are um, uh, using many different devices and many uh, different media uh, to take in story, to, to understand the world. And, um, and they're moving from one device to another um, almost uh, subconsciously. It, we don't even think about what it is that, that we're doing when we interact with um, uh, media, traditional and digital. Um, but uh, I think it's very important that as um, storytellers, as filmmakers, as uh, television producers, as, as writers, um, that we think about how to reach people by designing the story so that aspects of the story take place on different media platforms um, so that the uh, experience can be more immersive, uh, so that it can reach people in unique ways and tell unique things about uh, the, the story to um, the, the audience. Um, mm. In fact, the audience is the participant these days, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we're no longer simply just zoning out and, and, and leaning back. We're actually much more interested in immersing ourselves, getting more involved. Uh, transmedia is a method uh, to facilitate that. Yeah. So we play a role in the story. Is that what you're saying when you say that the audience are involved? You know, in a funny way, um, uh, for many, many thousands of years, mm. um, we sat around in circles just like this. And when I was uh, talking, uh, when, when, when the storyteller, the orator, was talking to the audience, um, uh, they were able to look right into the eyes of the people that they're, they're talking to. And in fact, um, they alter what they said based on the re reactions, the based on the response, yes. So there is an interplay that stopped with the advent of broadcast media, uh, right? Think about it. Yeah. So for a hundred years, we interrupted ourselves. <laughs> um, for the past century or so, um, um, it, you stopped mattering. And, uh, and I started basically telling you what to think. I started telling you um, uh, to, to buy this product, and you either did or, or didn't, but you usually did. Uh, and, um, and yeah, there were some ratings or some box office that can indicate to me whether my story was successful or not. But other than that, you had nothing to do with it. Yeah. Now, you guys control the, the dialogue. Um, you are much more um, uh, uh, the majority of, of what is being said about anything that I do, anything that the filmmaker or the creator of the brand, um, the, the corporation, anything that they do is a, a tiny sliver of the uh, totality of the discussion. You guys through social media are, are, are uh, much more in control. Yeah. So the age of broadcast is coming to an end. Um, and what we have now is a kind of pervasive communication. Um, and if I want to catch your attention, I have to kind of listen to you. I have to look into your eyes. I have to use the technology at hand um, to, to get your feedback and adjust my narrative. That's amazing, and that is a paradigm shift that a lot of big companies don't understand quite yet. That sounds really complex. 
<laughs> it does. It sounds, it sounds hard. But I love how you talk about it, that we're taking it back a step, the storytelling, bringing the storytelling element into it. Um, because for me, if I think about storytelling, that's what it is. It's engaging with people one-on-one. Right. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, but just to clarify, can, we, uh, can you explain to us kind of from broader, what are the platforms, what are the parts that you're bringing in to tell these stories? Um, well, some people will tell you that transmedia is about digital technology and about the Internet and so forth. I'm, uh, I, I go back a, a little bit further. Mm. I like the cave walls. <laughs> um, I, I like the tra traditional media, um, radio and, and, and television and, um, and old-fashioned books that you could actually touch. A book! A book! Whoa. Um, so um, uh, I think that it's a mix of all these things. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, the Bible is, is a very transmedia communication. It, you can see it in every uh, uh, conceivable manifestation and in many different ways. Um, so. Uh, in 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 a contemporary time and and as an example of a transmedia uh, implementation you you can think about something like Star Wars where there were a series of movies um, but you can read the novels and the novels don't necessarily repeat those stories they tell other stories that are set in the same world so they expand the um, story uh, yes, the, um, the, the video games about the Force and about the Old Republic and so forth actually help to expand um, and, and more deeply immerse uh, the player in that universe of, of Star Wars. Yeah. And now Disney's planning more movies and television shows that are set into, in this universe. That's very, of course, as a kid, that was fascinating to me because I love to get lost in in these uh, imaginary universes. Um, but now, as, as uh, uh, people become more sophisticated and demand more of their entertainment, um, they, they want to spend time in their favorite story worlds, whether that's the Hunger Games or, or Twilight or, or Glee. <laughs> um, there's, um, there's, there's this desire to, s to spend time there, so it needs to be different yeah. every time you experience it on different platforms. So it's like all those platforms are creating a universe. That's exactly it. For, for that. Is that, is that what you, would you define transmedia as creating universes? Well, it's, it's taking story worlds, which story is the, worlds. the term that, that we call, we call them story worlds, and it is um, uh, making sure first that there is an integrity to that story world so that the fundamentals of storytelling that you see in good screenwriting yeah. that you see in in any um, a, a good narrative art um, is is locked down so that then you can extend that that narrative so that um, you have uh, uh, quality e extensions mm. so um, it used to be that if there, for example, was a video game version of your favorite movie, what happened? It sucked. <laughs> don't, don't lie. It's terrible. <laughs> Usually, right? Um, uh, uh, it's, it's our job to make sure that that video game is, um, is good, is actually maybe being additive to your experience of the, of the intellectual property as opposed to being something that kind of milks it. Yeah. Um, and, um, and we do this for all aspects of the, the properties that we work on. So it's important for it to actually add to the universe, to bring something to it. Additive, yes. Cool. Yes. If I miss a platform, if I don't <laughs> buy the book or I don't play the game, if I just see the movie, am I missing anything? If it's good transmedia, no. Um, uh, a movie should feel whole, should feel complete, and should be a lot of fun or, or enlightening or yeah. uh, emotionally moving. What uh, I think is wonderful about transmedia is that you can then go out and look at uh, the, the television show or the, the uh, prequel or sequel novel and, um, and perhaps even see a different perspective. Yeah. You can investigate a different character's viewpoint on the narrative and, um, and it really, maybe it, it reverses your entire perception of, of what was going on. Uh -huh. The best kinds of transmedia are, are, are the kinds where you're essentially 
um, examining a story world from the different perspectives of the characters and events that are happening. Yeah. Well, you did that with your hand, and it made me think of kind of <laughs> going down the rabbit hole. There you go. Yeah. Like being able exactly. to see it from a completely different point of view. Precisely. The red, blue, or the blue pill. <laughs> <laughs> the Matrix was yeah. a, uh, a planned transmedia uh, implementation. Planned One trans of the, uh, How is that planned? That's the, fascinating. The, the more um, uh, remarkable um, uh, elements there. Um, uh, so uh, Larry and Andy Wachowski created the Matrix, and um, uh, they knew that if it would become a successful film, that there was so much more to that universe that they wanted to explore. Um, and certainly it was successful, and they then uh, created uh, graphic novels, uh, uh, video games, and um, uh, an array of, of other content that uh, even animated uh, uh, segments, the Animatrix, which uh, yeah. furnished a lot of the backstory, that, um, uh, that if you were a fan, you could explore all these aspects of this uh, remarkable universe. Mm. Now, the problem that they ran into <laughs> was that um, uh, uh, those sequels almost needed for you to understand all the different pieces the in order to uh, be able to access their their narrative mm. um, the there was almost a weird assumption that you will play this nine or twelve hour video game and read this dissertation and <laughs> and, and and the graphic novels and so forth and um, and people didn't do that so they didn't quite understand what was going on sometimes in that second and third uh, film. Um, so that's an important lesson to learn from transmedia storytelling that your, your driving platform, the platform that the most people are going to enjoy your story on, it needs to feel, yes, if it's, yeah, it needs to feel whole. It needs to feel fairly uh, complete. And that each other aspect that you're, that you're creating have some sense of beginning, middle, and end. Yeah. Um, so that uh, they're enjoyable all on their own. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in the past several years, um, with the Harry Potter uh, franchise, yes. um, what has been the medium that the vast majority of young people have been introduced to, to Harry Potter? It's not the novels. It's not even the movies. It's Lego Harry Potter. Is it really? <laughs> the video game has brought in the vast majority of new Harry Potter fans for the past five years. The Lego Harry Potter. So that's an access point into your story world that is unexpected. But, um, but once they're there, they want to go on and read the, the, the novels. Oh, that's or, amazing. Lego. Or watch the <laughs> movies and so forth. So you have to, uh, um, uh, as a transmedia producer, mm. um, it's my job to understand that any of these touch points could be the first time that somebody is coming across it's your coming property. That. So it's got to be cool and interesting and vital. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you, you walk into uh, the rest of the, uh, the universe. Well, because they have the, the Harry Potter studio now as well, and you can go do the tour. Mm -hmm. Is that considered a platform? It is. It is. An, is that an event? That would be an event, wouldn't it? Um, a, a, a live event live type event. Of, of situation. Yeah. Now, to draw a distinction, Harry Potter is, is not a pure transmedia play, and, and here's why. Harry Potter is cross-platform uh, because you see Harry Potter manifest itself uh, in different Dif media. Different things, yeah. Um, but the tendency under uh, Joe Rowling's uh, creative direction is for the story to be the same okay. no matter where you show up. So that Lego Harry Potter is the same as the Lego movie, uh, as, as the live action movies, mm. and those movies are telling the stories that you see in the, uh, in the novels. Um, so it is reiterative. It is cross-platform, but is not transmedia. Transmedia defines itself as being additive. There is something new that you're going to discover in the narrative by um, uh, experiencing the property on this other platform. Is that where the difference between multimedia and transmedia comes in? Um, well, uh, I essentially, multimedia yeah. and, and cross-platform uh, are very similar yeah. um, uh, things. 
transmedia is a kind of subset of multimedia across platform because there are extra uh, definitive uh, elements like the additive nature, uh, the interactive nature, and, and, and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's all so interesting. You've done some really cool things. You were yeah, we haven't talked about the fact no, that I've haven't. worked on, on some <laughs> wild uh, uh, properties. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just quickly, we'll mm -hmm. do a little bit of fan thing. So <laughs> we've got Tron. Tron, yes. Uh, Avatar, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Not the last Airbender kids. <laughs> uh, the one with the big blue uh, uh, Navi. And you took over. Uh, I wrote them all down. <laughs> pulling out my cards. Oh, here we go. Oh, you worked on Men in Black 3, yes. Pirates of the Caribbean, mm -hmm. Hot Wheels, Transformers. Amazing Spider-Man, you're still working on that. That's still a little bit, a little bit yeah. of spider there. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> and Halo. And Halo, yes. Which we have a bit of a connection with. New Zealand has a little. We've got the. Oh well, yes, yes. Peter Jackson Peter connection Jackson. with Halo. Um, what's been your favourite so far? Because these are all oh, really cool, and you've, there's so much more I haven't listed. Um, there are, are, are two kinds of favourites. One would be the opportunity to, um, uh, to actually build the, the creative story world, to invent it and, and build Starting it. Starting from the beginning. Starting from the beginning. Um, so when Mattel, a toy company, came to Starlight Runner, they said, well, we have 35 uh, little die-cast metal race cars. Yeah. Um, uh, we'd like some kind of story to tie them all together in tandem with the 35th anniversary of the, the, the toys. And that allowed for us to invent uh, a vast uh, story world about a race um, in, wow. in another dimension. And uh, we invented 35 drivers, uh, <laughs> by the way, some of whom were female. So no we way. to make a stand. I don't know women could it drive was, uh, cars. Well, you know, uh, it was, believe it or not, a little rough. A little difficult to push that through. But, uh, but we got it. Um, and, <laughs> <Thank> um, <laughs> and we got to, uh, to create uh, a number of comic books and a five-episode animated series that aired on Cartoon Network in the States and yeah. um, a video game and, and so forth. It was, uh, it was our first real full-scale uh, transmedia implementation uh, at Starlight Runner that was designed from the start uh, to impact all of these uh, different platforms and to register significant success. Yeah, that I can imagine that would have been so much fun in the early days in the office with everyone kind of hankering around going, right, what are we going to do with this car? A little cars? bit stressful. <laughs> A little stressful. Well, because um, the, the toy company didn't understand what transmedia was and, um, uh, and in order for transmedia to be effective, uh, uh, different divisions of, of the company all have to be aware of what's going on and I have know. to cooperate and such was not the case. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, uh, it's a, a kind of important life lesson and an important uh, piece of advice to, to everyone here that, um, that if you're going to prove something that's relatively new, even if what's new is you, <laughs> um, you, you have to go a little bit above and beyond. And, um, and it, 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 at first you would think, well, this giant toy company has its act together, so they'll take care of it. And, uh, and we discovered that many of the divisions of the company didn't even realize this Hot Wheels world race thing was, was happening. Um, and in, and it, it could be frustrating, but instead we named the characters after different people in the company who could help us. <laughs> That's a genius idea. And they said, oh, <laughs> wow, I'm glad to help you. You know, they, they yeah. jumped right on in and we worked together and, um, and the job was to make them look good and, and we did and, and that's how uh, something that should not have been possible under the uh, kind of traditional structure of that company or any studio that we're working with, it's how we we kind of pushed uh, the transmedia yeah. agenda, um, and uh, and what what uh, manifested was successful. So um, the extra effort uh, meant that um, that we had a wonderful case study. It didn't pay a, a whole lot. This was early on, and early days. people didn't 
didn't understand this. Um, uh, but I, my, my vision was in the long term, of, mm -hmm. you know, to, to affiliate yourself with a big brand like Hot Wheels um, is enough uh, for, for now to get that job done. We don't want to starve, but, um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you get, you get the work done and do the extra work and, and, um, and the proof is in the concept. That's what led us to Disney and to work on pirates and fairies and uh, Tron. You did fairies as well, didn't you? A little bit of fairies. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> Um, Do you foresee that being a problem? You see that we've got a paradigm shift happening yes. and that the old way of doing things is, it's a goner. But in the meantime, there's still a very much a set way that we do it. Do you foresee that still being a problem in the future? You know, bringing those different departments together, getting everyone to talk across the board. It's amazing how um, uh, different companies are responding to this in, in mm. very different ways. Um, in Hollywood, there are a few studios um, that um, uh, that see film as uh, the, the dominant art form. Yeah. Uh, in, in New in Zealand, America. in New Zealand, we love film. Uh, and um, and therefore, anything that's done mm. must serve uh, the film, the filmmakers, and ultimately uh, the studio executives, so yeah. they can maintain their jobs and and, and keep working. Um, the, the problem with that is, is, um, is that that's fine for um, a, a great drama, um, uh, something that uh, you'd want the uh, Motion Picture Academy to recognize and, and things like that. Um, but when it comes to these rich story worlds, um, it can be really tricky uh, because you are uh, investing hundreds of millions of dollars in these superhero movies and, and these big fantasies and, and so forth. And um, it's um, um, uh, if you're doing them one movie at a time, the franchise stands or falls on the success of that individual movie, right. not on the world. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very difficult to convince some of these studios that they need to invest in the world, that the studio executives need to take custody of the world and understand that it's an honor uh, to, to be supportive of these celebrated works of fiction, like um, the, the DC comic book universe mm. with Batman and Superman and Wonder Woman. Uh, th these um, these are, um, uh, are, are legends, are, are contemporary mythology. So is transmedia best set in these universes? I mean, can it not be for drama or small independent films? Or is it best served, or is it best set serving big universes? Oh no, I, I think it's applicable actually to, to all. My, my point about big superhero universes is that that's going to help you monetize in terms of licensing and merchandising yeah. and making all that stuff Money. count. And tying the films together yeah. into a common uh, a story world. Um, uh, the way that uh, Kevin Feige and Disney are doing with the Marvel superhero uh, films, which I think are fascinating and very, very successful mm. uh, transmedia. Um, but I also believe that independent films, um, that, that it's critical for, for transmedia to be applied to smaller films because that's the way you're going to reach people. Mm. How many of us um, are watching... Uh, television commercials that are advertising films. How many of us are reading newspapers and seeing an ad for a, a small independent film and making our decision based on that, that piece of advertising? We go out and see cool independent movies because our friends are, are telling us, you gotta see this, yeah. you know? And, um, and how do you, how do you um, or reach that, that audience? You have to um, start telling the story. So can we afford to ignore transmedia? Before the story uh, uh, even commences in the film. So no, <laughs> you can't afford uh, <laughs> to, you to go without it. Yeah. Um, you know, transmedia doesn't just mean um, making sure the superhero or the elf, you know, uh, manifests on Twitter. Um, it, it's about... Um, um, uh, in, in ancient times, when Homer would, would come to town and he was going to tell the story of the Odyssey or the Iliad, 
Um, he didn't just pop into town and get in the middle of the amphitheater and, and, and start the, the tale. He, he chilled out in taverns. <laughs> he, he put the word out. He, um, he enrolled people, enlisted people, um, and gave them tidbits about the story. So it got them excited and, and started a conversation that led to many people getting excited. And then they filled up that, that little amphitheater and he, he told his story. Um, that's what we're capable of doing now. Yeah. Uh, again, like I said, full circle. Uh, and, um, and particularly for independent film, where the subject matter, where the characters, the compelling characters are so critical, we need to be able to, to start telling the story beforehand. How do we do that with transmedia? Mm. How do we tell that little, that one character's story through transmedia, which seems so big, they seem so, it's very complex transmedia. Well, I won't give everything away because I'm gonna talk on next week at, okay. at Unitech on, on this subject, but it really starts with um, the, the team at hand, the, the, the filmmakers and the, the, the people who are, are there to communicate the mm -hmm. film to understand fundamentally what the message of the film is and who those characters really are. Um, and, and that means that somebody has to be uh, insightful uh, about the, the essence of, of what this communication is. Mm -hmm. it, sometimes it's not the filmmaker herself or himself uh, because their, their job is to make the movie and, and their ability to articulate manifests in the film itself and they're a basket case outside of the, <laughs> the, the, the production. So sometimes it's somebody else who, who has to come in, a yeah. producer, that's what I do. You're a I'm a transmedia producer. producer. Um, uh, uh, and, um, and it's their job to immerse themselves, to, to truly uh, understand what that vision was and to be able to articulate it to the team so that the, the core of that message is maintained no matter where it, it, it manifests. Do you see what I'm saying? I do. That's so, yeah, yeah that's, it's the true secret to successful uh, uh, transmedia. Um, uh, to, to get at that essence, um, which at its, at its deepest is truly what is coming from the heart of the storyteller. Um, what is it that that storyteller is giving to me that's going to make it, uh, the world, a, a little bit of a better place for me? You can use transmedia. Th th that's that's yeah. what story's all about, yeah. right? What was story at its most primal? Don't go near the saber-toothed tiger. <laughs> um, keep your eyes open when you're near the edge of a cliff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they, they were there to designed to, to help us, to help one another, and story illustrated uh, these things so that you didn't have to, you know, smash yourself into a wall. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so really that essence is still there. We tell each other stories so that we could light each other up and inspire each other or warn each other um, and, or, or comment on the, the world around us. And, um, and to understand what that is, is to be able to, uh, to drop that kind of pill of brand essence into whatever it is you're going to uh, discuss. Yeah. That way, um, uh, of course, each character in the narrative is a reflection of that core message in one way or the other. Um, and, um, and when you have that, um, you, you're able to communicate that um, on Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest or, or wherever it is that you're, uh, you're starting that conversation. And is it just limited to entertainment? How would not-for-profits or non-government organizations use it? Sure can, sure. can they use it? How would they use um, it? Sure, there's a, a wonderful implementation going on right now um, on uh, the uh, network Hulu. Hulu. Um, uh, in the, the United States, it's called East Los High, L-O-S-H-I-G-H. Um, this is a, um, um, a, a marketing itself as an entertainment um, uh, and it's certainly transmedia. It's going out through Hulu, but mm. it's also on a number of different, uh, it's on YouTube and, and, um, and a number of different social media platforms. And, um, and it seems to be a soap opera. 
um, uh, for young uh, Latina uh, women uh, in, in the Los Angeles area, uh, particularly focused in the, uh, in the Los Angeles area because that's where the story takes place. What it is really is it is messaging that will help uh, teenage uh, girls um, understand that although there is cultural pressure for them to become pregnant as early as possible, their families are pressuring them uh, to kind of capture a boy by, by becoming pregnant and then uh, producing a, a family uh, to, to acquire stability. There's a flaw in that logic somewhere. I'm not sure <laughs> what, what that is. But that's, that's pervasive in, in that subculture. East Los High is illustrating with great poignancy um, what the decision making is that goes into doing that versus um, facing those pressures and deciding against doing that um, and, and deciding to pursue a career um, and, and further education and, and things like that. It's very, very compelling and of course it invites uh, the audience who are teenage girls yeah. to contribute their stories. And so there is a community a video narrative, user-generated content that fits right in with the show um, of young women telling their story about either how they were caught up in this cultural flux and are having children and what that's like, um, and uh, young women who are telling their brave stories of how they are resisting this and are seeing the benefit to resisting it. It's amazing. It's not being um, didactic. It's not telling these girls what to do. If no. it did, they'd be gone. Because that happens in a lot of campaigns. That's right. That's right. So that, to me, is a wonderful example of transmedia being used for social good. Yeah. And, um, and that's an aspect of my company at Starlight Runner that we are committed to. We do these kinds of, uh, oh, you do? of, of uh, social implementations. That's yes. really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So from the way you've explained it, they, kind of, they found the message mm -hmm. in it, and then they've developed the a story. The yeah. Oh, the, the yeah. I mean, it's, it's almost a collaboration between the producers and the uh, That's so the, exciting. The it's, um, that's really amazing. That's, that's what this is. That's cool. That's what <laughs> <is>. <laughs> so what does that mean then for, for universities? for educational institutes because we've all got our disciplines are separate we're all at physically yes, in I different know. locations <laughs> but the world that you're explaining to us as it is you know as it's coming as it's happening mm -hmm. uh, we all need to be collaborating what do we need to be doing okay well there are there are two issues at hand um, uh, and and this is an aspect that I involve myself with um, and, and have in colleges or uh, uh, universities all over the world um, number one is that uh, transmedia technique I feel um, would uh, greatly enhance the education process okay um, so if a young person is receiving their information through the very things that they go home and are enjoying their entertainment on, yeah. it, it is much more likely that they're going to both absorb uh, the information and be able to express it back on those different uh, uh, platforms. Um, uh, so transmedia, uh, the use of transmedia to educate, um, I, I think is, uh, is vital. The, uh, the other thing is that, um, that transmedia literacy, the, the teaching of, of how um, a multi-platform narrative works and, um, and what the production process is for it, the development and production process, um, is also really important because um, I've gotten reports from professors, again, all over the world who say, well, I received this uh, term paper or this uh, dissertation um, uh, on a, um, uh, uh, the, those little memory sticks. <laughs> and there's a hard copy, but the hard copy doesn't have what's in the stick. A and, um, and there's a, a piece of music. And, and it's, it's all this stuff. And I don't know how to absorb uh, this. 
And sometimes that's because the student doesn't know how to create an interface that allows for the flow of the narrative. They're not literate enough to, yeah. to make this easy to access. So they need to be taught that because that's going to be the way of everything, isn't yeah. it? Um, Is it just about technology? Uh, it's it's uh, it's about um, uh, it's it's about as much about narrative as about technology, okay. um, and telling stories is is not something uh, that um, that comes naturally to some people, and and so story structure um, and um, and story um, uh, superstructure also needs to be uh, uh, taught so that we understand how we can tell stories. Mm -hmm within the context of greater stories, the way you can write an episode of a TV series while acknowledging the structure of the entire season and the entire uh, television series. I'm wondering if the business students, if any of you guys are wondering how that would work for you. I mean, does the word narrative come up a lot in your business classes? No, it doesn't, no. but it ought to. <laughs> it ought to. How would, how would business <coughs> students begin to look at transmedia? Um, uh, again, it's, it's vital. Um, uh, the, uh, one of the newer aspects of what we do at Starlight Runner is um, we help uh, large corporations uh, reinterpret themselves mm -hmm. and their stories. Um, if you're a large company that's been out there for a long time, you basically have fallen back on simple mission statements and slogans to communicate who and what it is that you are. Um, those don't stand up anymore. Um, um, so you, you have these big companies and they hire ad agencies and they say, well, we need to stay with it and we need to keep communicating and interrupting people's experiences with these commercials. Push it out. Um, and, and so the ad agencies are, are receiving increased pressure to basically create jokes um, hooks, uh, um, something flashy to keep you from buzzing through that commercial a anymore. Um, that's, that, that, those are the last ditch efforts of an age that is, that is passing. Um, <clears throat> what we do with, with companies, what transmedia can do for businesses is make you understand that essence. Who are you really? What is it that you're giving to the world? And uh, how is that made distinct by the personalities of the founders and the caretakers of this company? Um, because that's what's going to distinguish your bar of soap from everybody else's. Um, that's going, uh, you know, so do you create characters that convey these uh, essential aspirational elements? Do you um, uh, use testimonials? Do you integrate the stories of your customers into um, uh, the, the communication? I say yes to all of them and, um, and transmedia technique um, facilitates that. It, it, it makes it easier to break down who you are, what your corporate narrative is, so that you can insert that DNA, that essence, into your brands. Um, so that your brands become um, uh, these kinds of apostles for the, the, the company, so that your brand um, has to stand or fall on the integrity of, of who you are. Integrity. <laughs> oh, we're coming into problems here, I, I guys. I was going to say. <laughs> wow. Um, this is a big uh, issue for, for some of our clients. Well, how much responsibility do you feel? <clears throat> Uh, or not you, transmedia storytellers. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, um, uh, look, it's not up to us. Uh, the, the companies now have to understand that, um, uh, again, that, that while they used to be in control of broadcast, while they used to be able to communicate whatever they, they felt about, uh, about their brand, and if something horrible happened, uh, they simply can, can kind of sweep it under the rug and keep going. Well, now um, uh, enormous quantities are written about and communicated about through social media. People aren't going to let it go. <laughs> Not anymore. Um, and and if they, there's so much choice out there that if they're turned off to you, they're just going to go to somebody else, right? 
So um, a, a big part of what we have to ask of our clients is that they be authentic, that they stand up um, to the stories that, that they're telling. We can't design a story anymore uh, when the client is, is being bad, <laughs> is, is, is being awful, <laughs> you know, because they'll just see right through it, you know. Um, if, if it gets caught, um, it, it just gets all torn down. Yeah. Um, and so um, uh, what's really fun about what we're doing is that we have to um, ask the companies uh, whether or not they're going to, to straighten up, whether, whether they're going to, to uh, be able to answer criticism. And if they cannot, there's not much we can do to help them. You know, go, go to an ad agency. <laughs> it's really interesting that you say that. Mm -hmm. uh, I was wondering for you where the negotiation lay between the art of transmedia storytelling and the commerce. Because you mm -hmm. have mentioned the word franchises and brands, and I use the word campaign. Sure, sure. So how much of it is about just maximizing profits through the vehicle of narrative compared to... I'm in love with the story and I have to tell it and I have to tell right. everyone the best way I possibly can. How do you negotiate it's true. that? And these are things that, that we all have to grapple with um, as storytellers uh, when we enter into um, uh, the real world. <laughs> um, and, um, and the way I see it is, is this. Um, uh, these massive organizations are putting out stories. Um, they can't help themselves. That's how we uh, become engaged with products or films or, or, uh, or, or anything. And, um, uh, and so as transmedia producers, um, because we have um, the ability to become the hub because we have the ability to put ourselves into the middle of all of this communication. The spider web. Uh, yes, yeah. and, um, um, and, and understand what that essence is and, and put it out there. What happens sometimes is the, the answers to our questions are, oh, I don't know. <laughs> What's your, your essence? Yeah, they're, they're the answers we, we get. Uh, he's a dude who kills a lot of people with a big gun in space. Um, and, uh, and we say, well, you know, um, uh, the great warriors in, in mythology, um, uh, sometimes they brought peace to the land as, the result, as a result of their actions. Um, and they go, well, we don't want peace. That ends the franchise. And, and we go, well, Star Wars, which has war in the title, um, is actually a fairly aspirational story. It's about um, a, the ultimately bringing peace to the galaxy, right? So you can have your franchise um, and, and have it be uh, something that ultimately is about balance and, and, and bringing peace. Um, so let's, can we put a little of that in this? And, uh, and they say, oh, well, if it doesn't, have to end, then yeah, yeah, whatever you want. Um, uh, you know, if that's going to bring the audience and so forth. So you know what it is? It's like bringing redemption. It's like inserting human soul into uh, a big empty husk of a, of a, of a franchise. And, you do that. and the, the impact is enormously pop. People respond to that. They go, oh, you know, now it's not just a video game. We can make a TV series mm -hmm. out of it because there's something that it's saying uh, and so forth instead of bang, bang, bang. You know, so, so um, uh, as transmedia producers, in a way, have you ever heard of the term culture hacking? <laughs> um, we, can, we can insert aspirational uh, values and we can insert uh, things that, that can uh, touch lives and instruct and become emotionally resonant. We can even insert tiny pieces of ourselves and our own uh, uh, struggles and our own triumphs into these gigantic uh, global uh, implementations and watch as these ripples um, uh, fly out into the, the world. Um, uh, there is a... Um, uh, there are characters in those Hot Wheels stories. One of them was clearly, his name was Brian Kadim. He was clearly uh, 
Arab or, or Islamic. This was in the year 2002. Um, and and um, uh, Mattel didn't know what to, to make of this, this character. And, and we said, mm, please leave him, <laughs> leave him there, you know. Um, and, and that was one of the first cartoon characters who at all was reflective of, of that culture, of those, that, that race, that got out into the whole world. Millions and millions of children were exposed to Brian Kadeem, who had a whole episode devoted to him. He won uh, a part of the race. He was a good guy and, and, and so forth. And that was cool. That's exciting because you know? one question that we had was about culture, wasn't it? Um, interested in finding out what how you thought that indigenous cultures could jump on board transmedia. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Think about um, what's possible when you um, uh, create a forum for indigenous cultures, for, for cultures that were formerly invisible, um, to be able to tell their stories. Um, uh, the, the, um, uh, the way that I've learned about this is because Starlight Runner has become involved with situations where there are uh, uh, cultures under extreme duress. Um, uh, there is war, uh, there is uh, a rampant crime uh, and corruption in, in certain countries, and, um, and the local uh, uh, population, many of whom uh, have uh, been born in, and raised there for hundreds, if not thousands, of years, um, are are completely um, uh, embattled, and um, and if uh, a program can be designed that did not uh, penetrate this culture with propaganda, because America is known for that, um, but instead. Um, uh, reminded uh, certain storytellers of the fundamental values of their own cultural mythologies um, so that they can be inspired and remember what, what it is that they stood for as people. Um, it is possible to uh, stir them, uh, to, to, to make their hearts remember. And, um, and then um, if you then furnish a little technology uh, a, a little support, they can empower themselves to collectively decide to change the situation. Um, uh, we call this um, uh, population activation, okay? Population activation. Population activation. Transmedia can be used to uh, uh, wake people up and, and make them remember who they are and what their integrity is and, and that could um, uh, cause them to decide to make a change. I will illustrate, not with one of our implementations, because they're going on right now, and I, we can't talk about it. Uh, <laughs> but in, um, in uh, uh, Colombia, uh, there was a, uh, a terrible conflict between uh, the government and a, an organization called the FARC, who were considered terrorists. Um, uh, these things, this conflict had been going on for decades. Um, uh, at one point, the FARC kidnapped um, uh, some, some people from uh, uh, the city and were holding them. And one of them was a woman who was a journalist who was pregnant. Um, she was held for so long that she gave birth um, in captivity. And um, uh, that uh, child, if I have the story right, uh, was whisked away to safety by a FARC uh, uh, person who had sympathy for her and, and, uh, and helped her by taking the child back to, uh, to the city so the child wouldn't be subject to the horrors that were going on in that camp. Um, uh, and then uh, a little while later, she was uh, liberated. The people found out that, uh, that this had happened, that a mother was separated from her child. After decades of this conflict, that did it. <laughs> um, and somebody put up a Facebook page that said, no mas FARC, no mas sangre, no more FARC, no more blood. Uh, the next day, 15,000 people were Facebook friends uh, on that page. 
and the day after, 100,000 people with that t-shirt, no mas farc, no mas sangre, were marching in the streets, texting each other and contacting. This is only a few years ago. Um, it, 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 uh, days after that, people in other surrounding countries um, uh, uh, started to march, and the FARC withdrew and, uh, and went deep into the jungle and calmed down. And, um, and right now, there is a peace treaty um, being uh, drawn up between these sides and uh, a plan for, uh, for integration. Um, um, so this is a, a transmedia, uh, a spontaneous uh, transmedia action. Um, and, um, and what it is, is it's not people rising up with weapons to fight um, uh, these enemies. It's people going, stop, <laughs> just stop. <laughs> but with enough voices, yeah. you can't help but, but, uh, but listen. You know, and yes, the Colombians had all this technology uh, uh, with them, but that technology can be furnished to to populations at, at relatively low cost, and and companies like Google and and uh, uh, the, these uh, these large uh, technology companies, although they you can question them uh, in in some senses, they they'll cooperate that way because ultimately they want people. Uh, to communicate, it uses their <laughs> their products when everybody is talking. So I'm sorry I'm taking so long, but but that's yeah. really uh, astounding, and it is um, it is a technique that can be implement designed and implemented without being uh, disruptive necessarily to the the conflict at hand. Um, it, a, it gives people <laughs> it gives people the ability to to tell their story, yeah. and that's that's fantastic. At the end there, you touched on money and monetizing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. how, how would individual artists use transmedia if I was a painter or a writer? How do I monetize my projects? How did you monetize yours when you first started? Mm. Um, uh, I've been fortunate because I've been in companies that have allowed me or let me sneak and, <laughs> and do this sort of thing. Um, uh, but now you're right. Um, uh, to to be a work for hire person, even if I'm playing with the greatest superheroes in in the world, doesn't pay me a royalty. I have to look for work tomorrow. You yeah. know, we um, will graduate soon. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get a job? Um, so, um, so I have to think about uh, my own uh, uh, properties and telling my own stories at last. Um, and. Um, um, while I have an open door policy, the, I'm very fortunate the studios um, are glad to listen to any story I want to tell. What they will do is say, okay, I'll buy it. Um, and half of that is to take it off the market. Um, and the other half is, is, well, maybe they'll produce it and maybe they won't. Maybe it'll be transmedia, maybe it won't. Yeah. Um, that's not appealing to me. So. In some ways, I'm an independent producer, just like anybody who comes out of uh, okay. uh, uh, the, the Unitech. And so, um, the the thing that I have to do is join forces with uh, some of the best talent uh, that I've I worked with, who who are freelancers, who maybe believe a, a little bit in, in what I think about and and the story I want to tell. So relationships. Relationships are absolutely necessary. Transmedia is very difficult to do by yourself. It's yeah. possible, but not uh, not that easy. No, you can't do it alone. So there's a yeah. there's a team that that you put together, and then um, uh, what what we're going to do is leverage uh, publishing. So um, um, e e publishing is is just about the least expensive and and easiest thing to do. You can publish on the web. Yes. Uh, you can team with traditional publishers who are interested in expanding uh, into digital because um, wood is is going to go away from the book. <laughs> Sorry, I can't believe you think the book uh, is leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, um, uh, it, it's a way to to build an audience. Um, so. Um, uh, anybody with a couple hundred Facebook friends um, has a, an audience I've right started. right there and then you've yeah. started already yeah. um, and um, and if you're if you're telling a story 
uh, my best advice is is to have a good solid sense of of its direction um, or at least a deep commitment to finish telling a portion of it so that it feels whole mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm, I'm very patient and, and allow people to, uh, to ask me questions about their work and, and, and so forth, but I won't uh, comment on a, a piece of work that's not uh, at, at least finished to some degree. Um, and, um, uh, you know, it, it, was it Woody Allen who said that 95% uh, of anything is showing up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, that's what it is. You you have Fair. to uh, you you have to demonstrate your efficacy, your capabilities by um, uh, finishing uh, something and having it be halfway decent. Which means having friends or teachers or, or even strangers look at something and say, "Does this suck or not?" Um, <laughs> and and being bold enough to to uh, to accept what that answer is and maybe re-examine it to, to improve it and keep improving it. Um, the finishing something allows for somebody to say, you know what, they finished. It's so rare. Guys, seriously, it's so rare, the a actually finishing something, that, that uh, it draws attention. It does. It does. Um, I, I love video games, and people know that, so they bring me <laughs> a level, a single level. Or, or they bring me some character designs and, and, and things like that. And if your job is to make a video game and all you're giving me is a couple of characters and then you're going to explain to me the rest of the game, not it's not working. So we need to graduate. <laughs> <laughs> make relationships. Yes. Get good mentors. Yes. Be there. Finish the work. Yes, yes. And some people think that that's really uh, tricky to do. But, but guys, here's, here's the real secret, and I talked about this in, in Never Surrender. Um, what you want to do, it's likely that somebody has, has done it, uh, or something close to it. Find them. <laughs> Find them. It, it is astounding um, how you can establish relationships with perfect strangers who are accomplished through... Uh, social media and mm. and the internet and uh, and a lot of these people are not famous you might think they're famous because you're admiring them but they don't get fan mail <laughs> <laughs> they don't get somebody who goes that was awesome yeah. uh, you know here's why I think it's awesome um, and and here's what I'm going to do so that I can become like you uh, okay you guys are in a unique position because you're young. And so when I get a message from uh, someone like that that says those things, n not, hey, <laughs> can you help me? <laughs> I want to make a, a hundred million dollar movie and I have an idea that's worth a billion dollars and I'll give you some. That's not it, you know. Um, here's why I think you're cool. Here's, here's um, uh, uh, my insight about this space. And here's my plan. Oh, okay. I'm going to answer the question, and so would any one of these people. Um, and when you have that relationship, you have help. You have help. I'm wondering, you don't have a Wikipedia page. I couldn't find you on <laughs> Wikipedia. Is that you managing your story? No, it's not. What, it's, what's it's, happening um, there? It's, it's a, an attack. So <gasps> help me, guys. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so um, again, I talked a little bit about this in, in Never Surrender. Um, uh, I, I, I've come up with a, a certain set of ideas and a certain interpretation of, of what transmedia is and what it can be. And there are other people out there who feel that it's, it's wrong or incorrect and, and so forth. So um, uh, someone had put up uh, Wikipedia pages for Jeff Gomez and Starlight Runner, and, um, and they became battlegrounds um, uh, where, where people were changing information and, and so, so that's forth. Your audience. I uh, guess, maybe my rivals, uh, um, <laughs> maybe people who, uh, 
<laughs> who didn't quite believe, um, uh, and and so Wikipedia took them down. Yeah, so it's the dark uh, side of transparency. You know, well, <laughs> <laughs> if that's all it is. I when think when you're <laughs> seriously, when when you're um, there's a wonderful uh, a video of uh, uh, a, a a music festival with a guy dancing crazily uh, by himself. Um, and uh, and he's being sneered at and uh, and and ignored and and so forth and he's just doing his thing out there, um, and, and then uh, uh, soon enough a second guy comes and starts doing the same crazy dance and suddenly there's a big crowd. Yeah. Uh, I'm that first crazy guy. <laughs> Can we be the second guy? <laughs> I welcome you. I welcome uh, we'd you. like to thank you so much for coming and talk to us. This has been so informative. I didn't know there was so much to know. Oh, there's, there's it's the whole universe, a whole mythology to learn. <laughs> so we do really want to thank you for your time. We know you're really busy. You're here until you. Wednesday. Yes, and then the off workshop. to Wellington and Weta. I can't you're going wait to Weta? To, yes, to talk oh to, uh, to the team there. Um, uh, listen, um, uh, you can learn more about what I do and um, uh, even uh, reach me through Twitter. Um, it's at Jeff underscore Gomez. Put the little the word the little down in there on the bottom of the screen. At Jeff underscore Gomez. Uh, and Facebook is Starlight Runner Entertainment. Um, and there you'll see various uh, articles about uh, our company and uh, relevant uh, uh, articles yeah. about transmedia. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah, we're all going to be in touch. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Here. It's been fantastic. Enjoy the rest of your time. Your first John. time. I was my first interview. That's awesome. With Jeff. Yay. All right. Thank you, Jeff, very much for coming. <laughs> I'll put it on every platform.